Greetings. We think you'll find this video very informative. The Vecor company is introducing a powerful new tool for high vacuum system design, simulation, and analysis. VACAD 1.0 software. Here we discuss VACAD's main features and show how the software works on examples of specific vacuum system designs and analysis. Let's open the software. The VACAD interface consists of a few panels. Panel Vacuum Chamber. Here a user enters vacuum chamber dimensions and the material it's made of. Panel Roughing Pumps, to choose a roughing pump or pumping system. Panel Low Vacuum Components, to define roughing hose parameters and to choose a roughing valve. Panel High Vacuum Pumps, to choose a high vacuum pump. Panel High Vacuum Components, where a user can choose and install a high vacuum gate valve, baffle, elbow, and nipple. Below is the black pumping controller panel. It includes the pumping mode switch, allowing you to choose the simulation of roughing, rough, or high vacuum, high vac pumping, and indicators displaying the pressures in different vacuum system points. In a vacuum chamber volume, on a high vacuum pump inlet flange, and on the backing flange of a turbomolecular or diffusion pump, if a system works with a gas load. When the software opens, all indicators display an atmospheric pressure of 1,000 millibars. Next is the mass flow controller panel. Here are the mass flow controller MFC with a gas flow step control and full scale range switched from 10 to 30,000 standard cubic centimeters per minute and the manual leak valve, MLV, allowing any setup, including a very small gas flow. For example, simulating a gas permeation through O-ring vacuum seals. The throttle gate valve controller sets up a high vacuum throttle gate valve opening, if such a gate valve is installed. Results of analysis are shown as plots on the bottom right panel, where you can see the portraits of vacuum science and engineering founders. Parameters of vacuum materials, pumps, valves, and other vacuum components are stored in the software databases. A user can edit all those databases, enter new components, change their specifications, and delete them if no longer needed. Database editing is described in detail in the software manual. The sources of database data are the vacuum components manufacturer's specifications and any other external sources. You purchase VACAD with the minimal set of components stored in the databases which are necessary to start your work with the software. The more vacuum pumps and other components that are stored in the software databases, the more the software possibilities. The VACAD menu is very short and just serves for auxiliary and additional options. Database files, import and export. Calculation of gas permeation through elastomer seals. Calculation of molecules, ions and electrons mean free path. Gas flow regimes estimation. And the menu provides links to online help and tutorial. All operations and the results are carried out in a single window. Now let's see how VACAD works on an example of rough pumping. Let's assume that our vacuum chamber is evacuated by a roughing pump through a roughing hose with a valve Suppose that our hose has a single 90 degree bend with standard bending radius. First of all, we define our vacuum chamber in the vacuum chamber panel. 
Choose the vacuum chamber material focusing on its outgassing rate. Let's make it stainless steel. Then we select the vacuum chamber dimensions units, millimeters or inches. Let's select millimeters. The program allows you to choose one of the standard shapes of a vacuum chamber. A spherical, cylindrical, or rectangular box. Or choose a freeform chamber. For the standard shapes, the program opens text fields to enter dimensions. For a spherical chamber, its diameter. For a cylindrical chamber, its diameter and height. For a rectangular box chamber, its length, width, and height. And calculates the chamber volume and surface area. For a freeform chamber, you must determine its volume and surface area and enter those values in the prompted text fields. Let's create a rectangular vacuum chamber with dimensions 500 by 500 by 700 millimeters. Enter those dimensions. Click Calculate and obtain this chamber volume, 175 liters, and surface area, 19,000 square centimeters. The next step is to choose a roughing pump in the Roughing Pumps panel. First we set up the number of pumps. One should be OK. Then in the database, we select the Pfeiffer Vacuum Vane Pump Duo 20 MC with a nominal pumping speed of 24 cubic meters per hour. Clicking on that pump, we select it and see its pumping speed curve on the results panel and short specs on the roughing pumps panel, nominal pumping speed and ultimate pressure. In order to install the roughing hose, let's go to the low vacuum components panel. The chosen roughing pump inlet flange has a diameter of 25 millimeters. So we set the roughing hose diameter at 25 millimeters and a length of say 1500 millimeters. Let's enter one 90 degree bend with a standard bending radius. Because we've installed a single pump, there should be just one roughing hose. Now we need to choose a vacuum valve. Confirm that we need a roughing valve. Select a NorCal angle valve with a flange diameter of 25 millimeters. With all that data entered and chosen, click the Hose Conductance button and obtain the calculated plot of roughing hose conductance versus pressures at the panel of results. And roughing hose and valve short specs on the Low Vacuum Components panel. Here we are. We've designed our rough vacuum system and now can simulate how it works. Click the label Rough on the black pumping controller panel and obtain the pumping plot, which is pressure in our vacuum chamber versus pumping time and reached ultimate pressure on the first pressure display. Our vacuum chamber should be pumped down to an ultimate pressure of 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 3 millibars in about 1,000 seconds or 17 minutes. On the effective roughing pumping speed plot, we see effective or real pumping speed at the vacuum chamber flange versus the pressure. It's less than a vacuum pump nominal pumping speed in the pressure range below 1 millibars when the roughing hose and valve total conductance becomes comparable or less than the pump pumping speed. Now let's see what happens if we change some parameters in the system. Let's shorten the roughing hose twice. We see that the roughing hose conductance as well increases about twice. Click Rough and see that the pumping time stays almost the same and the ultimate pressure improves a little bit to 8.7 times 10 to minus 3 millibars. and effective pumping speed increases a little bit in the low pressures range.
But if we increase the diameter of the roughing hose twice, even keeping its original length, the conductance of the hose will increase noticeably. Click rough and the pumping time is reduced by about half. With a slight improvement of the ultimate vacuum to 8.8 .8 times 10 to minus 3 millibars, and the effective pumping speed is also increased. See the red curve. Let's go back to the previous roughing hose dimensions, a diameter of 25 millimeters and a length of 750 millimeters, and increase the vacuum chamber dimensions, setting the length and width to 750 millimeters. and height to 1,050 millimeters. The vacuum chamber volume will increase more than three times, up to 591 liters, and the surface area more than twice. Evacuate our new vacuum chamber and compare the results with previous vacuum chamber pumping. The pumping time increases by about three times, up to 50 minutes, and the ultimate pressure also increases to 1.2 times 10 to minus 2 millibars. Of course, you can replace or add pumps, changing the roughing hoses and valves. The program will analyze all options and allow you to choose the best one. Now let's pump down the same vacuum chamber to a high vacuum. We need to install a high vacuum pump with a high vacuum gate valve. Let's choose a turbo molecular or diffusion pump, backed with the same backing pump we used for rough pumping. The high vacuum pumps database allows you to store data of turbo molecular, diffusion, cryo, or ion pumps. We chose one turbo molecular pump, Pfeiffer Vacuum High Pace 1500 with a nominal pumping speed of 1400 liters per second and inlet flange of 250 millimeters diameter. The pump pumping speed versus pressure plot appears on the results panel. Enter the start pressure for high vacuum pumping, 5 times 10 to minus 2 millibars. And the end pressure we want to get in our chamber is 5 times 10 to minus 6 millibars. Now let's place the A and N Corporation high vacuum gate valve with the same 250 millimeter flange between the pump and vacuum chamber. The design is now completed, so let's turn on the high vacuum pumping. We see that the vacuum chamber will be evacuated to the pressure 4.7 times 10 to minus 6 millibars in about 50 minutes. Because of the gate valve, the pressure in the chamber is a little bit higher than at the high vacuum pump inlet flange. and effective pumping speed at the vacuum chamber flange is 1300 liters per second, which is a little bit less than the vacuum pump nominal pumping speed of 1400 liters per second. Let's see what happens if we install the elbow with a flange diameter of 250 millimeters between the vacuum chamber flange and high vacuum gate valve. This is our gate valve. This is the high vacuum pump, and this is our new elbow installed between the gate valve and the vacuum chamber.
Choose and enter the elbow. And turn on high vacuum pumping once again. It noticeably reduces the effective pumping speed on the vacuum chamber flange to 900 liters per second. Increasing the pumping time and increasing the pressure difference between the vacuum chamber and the high vacuum pump inlet flange. We can add a baffle and nipple as well, but they'll reduce the effective pumping speed and increase the pumping time even more. Now, let's apply into the vacuum chamber an operation gas with consumption or flow, say, of 6 standard cubic centimeters per minute and pump down the chamber. The message appears that in order to keep backing pressure below the value of 2 millibars specified for a given pump, you have to use the backing pump with a pumping speed more than 0.2 cubic meters per hour. For that gas flow, the pressure in the vacuum chamber should be 2.9 times 10 to minus 4 millibars. At the vacuum pump inlet flange, 1.9 times 10 to minus 4 millibars. And at the high vacuum pump outlet flange, 4 times 10 to minus 2 millibars. Suppose we need to keep the pressure 1.5 times 10 to minus 3 millibars inside the vacuum chamber. To obtain that pressure, let's increase the gas flow up to 30 standard cubic centimeters per minute. We get the message about the necessary backing pump pumping speed and a second message that the pressure at the high vacuum pump inlet flange reached the value of 10 to minus 3 millibars. At such inlet pressure, a turbo molecular pump can work unstable, and VACAD recommends installing a throttle valve to decrease pressure at the pump inlet flange. Okay, now let's replace our high vacuum gate valve with the VAT throttle gate valve with the same 250 millimeters flange. and start to control its conductance and gas flow to obtain the required pressure inside the vacuum chamber and a safe pressure at the high vacuum pump inlet flange. The throttle gate valve controller turns on automatically when we choose it and displays its conductance at full opening. Reduce the throttle valve opening to 5%. It takes a while. and obtain the pressure at the high vacuum pump inlet flange of 7.5 times 10 to minus 4 millibars with the pressure in the vacuum chamber of 2 times 10 to minus 3 millibars. Reducing gas flow to 22 standard cubic centimeters per minute we obtain the required pressure in the vacuum chamber of 1.5 times 10 to minus 3 millibars and pressure at the high vacuum pump inlet flange of only 5 times 10 to minus 4 millibars, which is a safe value. You can change pumps as well, add and remove high vacuum components, control gas flow. VACAD informs you when the working mode may be unsafe and helps you to find optimal solutions. You can save results as plots in standard graphic files, ping, JPEG, and bitmap, and as text data files, and use them later with other Windows applications. 
Thus, the VACAD software allows you, in a few minutes, to design, simulate, analyze, and optimize industrial and lab vacuum systems made of real standard vacuum pumps and components chosen by the user. The program analyzes the vacuum system for rough and high vacuum pumping modes with a gas load and takes into account the vacuum chamber walls outgassing. It's very easy to work with VACAD software so a user doesn't need to be an expert in vacuum engineering to get familiar with it. It's used for vacuum systems development and design, to analyze, optimize, and upgrade existing vacuum systems, and to develop different vacuum processes. A separate area of its application is the training of vacuum lab and industries personnel, and the education of students of technical specialties associated with vacuum equipment and technologies. You can find a more detailed description of VACAD software, technical documentation, and buy it online at our website. Thank you for your time and attention.